Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church of Bristol, Tennessee. We are so happy to have you worshiping with us, whether it's on Sunday morning or sometime during the week. Please remember to wear masks and to socially distance and get those COVID vaccine shots when your turn comes. We look forward to being able to worship together, but we know that the church is not the building, but those people who frequent it and our family. Good morning. Our scripture today is 1 Samuel 3, verses 1 through 20. The boy Samuel served the Lord in Eli's presence. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare and prophetic visions were not widespread. One day, Eli, whose eyesight was failing, was lying in his usual place. Before the lamp of God had gone out, Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was located. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here I am. He ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. I didn't call, Eli replied. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Once again, the Lord called Samuel. Samuel got up, went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. I didn't call you, my son, he replied. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, because the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Once again, for the third time, the Lord called Samuel. He got up, went to Eli, and said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the boy. He told Samuel, Go and lie down. If he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came, stood there, and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel responded, Speak, for your servant is listening. The Lord said to Samuel, I am about to do something in Israel that everyone who hears about it will shudder. On that day I will carry out against Eli everything I said about his family from beginning to end. I told him I am going to judge his family forever because of the iniquity he, sh he knows that about his sons are cursing God, and he has not stopped them. Therefore I have sworn to Eli's family, the iniquity of Eli's family will never be wiped out by either sacrifice or offering. Samuel lay down until the morning, and then he opened the doors of the Lord's house. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision, but Eli called on him and said, Samuel, my son, here I am, answered Samuel. What was the message he gave you? Eli asked. Don't hide it from me. May God punish you and do so severely if you hide anything from me that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and did not hide anything from him. Eli responded, He is the Lord. Let him do what he thinks is good. Samuel grew and the Lord was with him. And he fulfilled everything Samuel prophesied. All Israel from Dan to Beer, to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a confirmed prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear in Shiloh because there he revealed himself to Samuel by his word. Good morning. Welcome. We're so glad you're joining us today. Let's begin this morning by singing hymn selection 454, Open My Eyes That I May See. Silently 
today is from Psalm 139, the Jewish Publication Society. O Lord, you have examined me and know me. When I sit down or stand up, you know it. You discern my thoughts from afar. You observe my walking and reclining. And are familiar with all my ways. There is not a word on my tongue. But that you, O Lord, know it well. You hedge me before and behind. You lay your hands upon me. It is beyond my knowledge. It is a mystery I cannot fathom it. Where can I escape your spirit? Where can I flee your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I descend to Sheol, you are there too. If I take wing with the dawn to come to rest the western horizon, even there your hand will be guiding me. Your right hand will be holding me fast. If I say, surely darkness will conceal me, night will provide me with cover. Darkness is not too dark for you. Night is as light as day. Darkness and light are the same. It was you who created my conscience. You fashioned me in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am awesomely, wondrously made. Your work is wonderful. I know it very well. My frame was not concealed from you. When I was shaped in a hidden place, knit together in the recesses of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed limbs. They were all recorded in your book. In due time, they were formed to the very last of them. How weighty your thoughts seem to me, O God. How great their numbers. I count them. They exceed the grains of sand. I end, but am still with you. Examine me, O God, and know my mind. Probe me and know my thoughts. See if I have any vexatious ways. And guide me in ways everlasting. Friends, I want to invite us to join together in a time of prayer this morning. And I will open us up with the Collect of the Day and then invite us into a time of silence. And if you have concerns or joys that you need to lift up, I invite you to do so in YouTube comments or in our Facebook live feed or directly messaging to me or emailing them in whatever way that you need to make those known and to whomever you need to make those known, I invite you to do so. But after a time of silence and lifting up, quietly our concerns and our joys, I'll invite us to join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Friends, let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen.
And now, friends, with the confidence of children of God, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Friends, I invite you to join me in a reading from the Gospel according to John on this day. I'll be sharing from the first chapter of John, the 43rd through the 51st verse. And I'll be reading from the Common English Bible this morning. If you have a translation that's a little different from mine, that is all right. Somewhere in between the words on your page and the words on mine, there is a word that God will speak to us together. And in reverence for the Gospel reading this morning, friends, I invite you to stand as you are able. A reading from John. The next day, Jesus wanted to go into Galilee, and he found Philip. Jesus said to him, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, the hometown of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found the one that Moses wrote about in the law and the prophets, Jesus, Joseph's son from Nazareth. Nathanael responded, can anything from Nazareth be good? Philip said, come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said about him, Here is a genuine Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, How do you know me? Jesus answered, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are God's son. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. I assure you that you will see heaven open and God's angels going up to heaven and down to earth on the human one. Friends, hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. I invite you to be seated. Let the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. There are characteristics of stories I don't catch immediately. There are characteristics of stories I don't catch for years, actually. I, I don't know how long I've been reading the story of Samuel's calling, but I don't think I've ever noticed that the fourth time God calls Samuel, God isn't just a disembodied voice. The Lord came, stood there, and called as before Samuel. Samuel. I'm thankful the Lord hasn't woken me up that way. This week and next week bring us Old Testament and Gospel stories about calling. Uh, this week we're in John's Gospel, hearing the story of the calling of Philip with one L and Nathaniel also with one L. Next week we're about Simon, Andrew, James, and John and fishing for people. Uh, of the two, I think this is the weirder story. We get through for, verse 46 just fine, even, even with a quote that's become really memorable and transferable to a number of different contexts. Can anything good come from Nazareth? But then along comes verse 47, and I have no idea why Jesus is immediately taunting Nathaniel. Like I'm trying really hard to read this without sarcasm, but I just I can't do it. 
Maybe Jesus is responding to what somebody told him Nathaniel said. Can anything from Nazareth be good? Well, can there be an Israelite free of deceit? Now, I can't ask that question. I know that. This is a joke that only works in the in crowd. But I want to step away from the in joke to the background. Y- y'all remember Israel, right? Not the country, but the people, the person, in fact. Do you remember whom Israel used to be? No, who Israel used to be. That's a nominative. You remember Jacob. Jacob, the trickster. Y'all, the, the patriarchs have a deep history of dishonesty. It characterizes their entire story arc. We are continually juxtaposing the patriarchs' tricks and lies with God's faithfulness. So read this little, little interaction with, with humor. Read Jesus and Nathaniel taunting each other back and forth. This isn't Jesus trying to reel Nathaniel in to convince him. Jesus doesn't need to do that. Nathaniel's already committed. You know how I know that? He shows up. If he hadn't wanted to be part of this thing, he'd have stayed home. If he had serious doubts about who Jesus was, he'd have written off Philip's exclamation. But he takes Philip seriously. And he gets on board. And by the way, these disciples really ought to have known what they were getting into. We have a long history of God calling people to become troublemakers. It's not new. It ought to be expected. Maybe maybe that's why God calls Samuel so young, you know, to catch them before they know what they're getting into. But the thing is, Jesus knows our capabilities. Jesus knows where we're coming from. It was you who created my conscience. You formed me in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am awesomely, wondrously made. Your work is wonderful. I know it very well. My frame was not concealed from you when I was shaped in a, in a hidden place, knit together in the recesses of the earth. Jesus knows exactly what kind of troublemakers we have the potential of becoming. Jesus calls us exactly for that. Jesus calls us to be healers in a world that revels in violence. Jesus calls us to recognize the potential in the runt of the litter. Remember David? Jesus calls us out of sleep to wake a weary world. Jesus calls us to march, to sing, to proclaim justice and righteousness and the immediate, imminent arrival of the kinship of heaven. Even even when we're minding our own business under our fig trees, God is with us. Even in our private times, Jesus is there. Maybe, maybe it just takes a little more attentiveness or a little more childlikeness in the case of Samuel to become aware of God standing there and gently nudging us awake. Samuel. Samuel. And that's not the scary part. The calling is easy. Noticing is is easy. It's the following that's hard. I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of all who hear it tingle. And that's only the beginning of Samuel's prophetic task. 
Boy, there's a lot more to come. There's a lot more divine trouble to cause. This isn't, this isn't a feel-good faith, y'all. This is a troublemaking faith. This is a faith that calls out injustice, that corrects wrongs, that casts down the mighty from their thrones and lifts up the lowly. This is the faith of Samuel, the faith of Elijah, the faith of Nehemiah. This is the faith of Nicholas, the faith of Joan of Arc. And let's remember this week also, this is the faith of King. Maybe it's time to remember that just three years ago, King's partner, John Lewis, reflected our struggle is not the struggle of a day, a week, a month or a year. It is the struggle of a lifetime. Never, ever be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble. Necessary trouble. If you want an easy faith to follow, this isn't it. If you want a faith that will change the world and change you with it, you're on the right track. Jesus isn't a status quo Christ. Jesus is a transforming Christ. Jesus is the Christ who brings the kinship of heaven every time God draws near. That's the Jesus we're called to follow. Boy, I hope you will follow too. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, please join me in singing our final hymn, hymn selection 419, I Am Thine, O Lord.
Friends, go from here to hear and follow the calling of the one who knows you by name and knows exactly what you're capable of. Go and follow the one who's going to cause holy trouble and is going to bring the kinship of God through you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Did you know, when you donate to the Human Relations Day offering, you support community developer programs, United Methodist voluntary programs, and youth offender rehabilitation programs. We are called to make an impact in communities where our brothers and sisters in Christ lack the resources or tools to reach their God-given potentials. Our gifts are part of building beloved community through faith-based volunteer programs, community developers, and programs that support youth development. Donations help create programs that seek to be in relationship with community groups and organizations to address unjust political, social, and economic systems. On Human Relations Day, we join United Methodists around the world in remembering that the size of the table of divine love is unlimited. Help us strengthen and build beloved communities. Through our gifts, may we catch a glimpse of the spirit of beloved community, lived out in the lives of our brothers and sisters in Christ. Give in person, by mail, or online at umc.org sss give.